We're flying over the remains of the war where our compatriots lie buried, having died in the mass slaughter of a heroic struggle. World leaders are still talking about the German reparations that are to last for the next 59 years until 1989. We fly over Ypres and Verdun. German crew members drop a wreath for their fallen compatriots. The water of the Bodensee and the small town of Friedrichshafen lie in the distance on the horizon. The Zeppelin is Germany's national showpiece, says Captain Lehmann. The money to build it was raised by the German people. The airship is a symbol of national unity. This is their airship, he says. Their Zeppelin has come home. The original plan was to fly from Friedrichshafen to Friedrichshafen. Germany has no more money to spend, so Hurst pays. He owns the journey and flies from New York to New York. departure, there is a complete fuss about Commander Eckner. In a talk he gave, he said that the Graf Zeppelin is actually out of date, but that Germany is working on a technically more advanced airship. Some of the passengers are highly agitated. No wonder the most dangerous stage lies ahead of us. We're not referring to Berlin or the plains of Poland, but to the vast desolate expanse of Russia and Siberia. We have fuel for 150 hours to get us across 11,000 kilometers. 
One of the passengers gives a radio interview full of self-importance. I must be very careful in view of the pledge of silence expected from me. I want to consult some fellow lawyers before I say anything. Eckner addresses us. He is honest and direct. He has spoken to Stalin's staff. Russia has opened her gates so that we may fly over her vastness. This is an expedition. Eckner will give his life for our safety. Now we're heading for Berlin. Everybody is happy to be on the move again and eager to see Berlin. In the last hour, the city has become thronged with people. The traffic is chaotic. Businesses have shut down for the day. People are standing on every flat roof. Just past the Polish frontier, 15th of August.